the blue corner, wearing black trimmed with silver and weighing in at 154 pounds. His professional record stands at 16 victories with 11 knockouts. He has five losses and one draw. From Brooklyn, New York, ladies and gentlemen, here is the challenger, former super welterweight champion of the world, Brooklyn Key. the ring fighting out of the red corner wearing black trimmed with white also weighing in at 154 pounds in 1996 he captured olympic gold and now as a professional he has a perfect record consisting of 13 bouts 13 victories with seven knockouts ladies and gentlemen from philadelphia pennsylvania presenting the reigning and defending undefeated wba Super welterweight champion of the world, the American dream, David Reed. Boxer center. David center, please. Boxer center. You guys both have a mouthpiece? Get nice these in. All right. You have any questions? Yeah. Let's touch gloves. Let's go to work. Right. This is what we want, baby. An unusual swing in the odds on this fight, guys. This was a five to one fight up until this morning. Went up to about eight to one in favor of Reed. And a few minutes ago, it was down to about two and a half or three to one. So you're saying there's a flood of late money on Mullings at the end of the day. Hey, you guys, give that judge He's a little the guy who upset off. Norris. And I think Bring these odds are closer to reality than the five to one and eight to one. I totally agree. This is no five to one fight, Roy Jones. No, it's not a five to one fight. Uh, the thing you have is a classical boxer and a good fighter. And when those two come together, whoever can go out and do what it is he does best will usually win the fight. Reed being the classical boxer, he's quicker, he's rangier. Mullings being a dedicated fighter who won't go away easily. Mullings has never been knocked down. Did you ever hurt him in sparring run? A uh, very few times. Did he ever hurt you? He has good punch of power. Mostly with the right hand? And he has punch of power in both hands. I've seen him hurt a lot of guys. What do you think of Reed's punching power? Reed has ex exceptional punching power himself. He knocked Both out Simon. Yes, and he knocked out Simon Brown. He really showed me a, a, a lot of punching power. Stop, stop, stop. Don't push, don't push. Reed himself acknowledges that throughout his amateur career and earlier stop. in his pro career, he was right hand crazy. Don't push him down. But through the tutelage of Al Mitchell, his dedicated surrogate father trainer, uh, David has gradually improved his left hand and now thinks it's almost as good as the right. And look at how droopy the left eyelid already is. Yeah, the shade has started to come down. But it's interesting, Roy, that customarily Reed stands tall and everybody has thought that's how he compensates for that eyelid. But here he is in a deep crouch to be right with Mullings. And that's the best thing he could have done. And he's using his jab, which is very smart. I think David Reed fully understands that he has taken that long-awaited step up in class. This is not like fighting James Coker or Kevin Kelly or even Laurent Boudouani. Keith Mullings is a two-handed fighter who can do a lot. And Reed respects that. Mullings showing excellent head and shoulder movement here. But Reed denting him with the jab. Um, he's throwing a very smart jab here early in the fight. Reed is fighting a very smart fight. He's not getting too cocky. He's not trying to look for a one-punch knockout right off the bat. He's using a good jab. And he's staying at range, not allowing Mullings to get inside. The fight for Mullings is late anyway. He needs to get into an extended bout so that he can get get more of his power shots in as a fighter. That's what happened against Terry Norris. He wore Norris down and turned the tide against Norris. There's a hard right hand by Reed. 
David Reed's been effective with the jab in round one. He finally gets in a right cross. Keith Mullings hasn't really been able to get the offense going. And so round one is a good one for the American dream. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Jim, the fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. As you know, it's the unified rules. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can't be saved by the bell in any round, including that 12th and final round. Jim. Whatever you All right, throw, Harold. Just hook right off it, off, right off your defense, it's okay? okay? And sometimes come back with your jab. Another thing, you're making a miss, but you ain't making him okay. pay, yeah. okay? You're doing well, okay? And don't let him get set. Just keep working the stick. Right here, right here. I don't care if that left hand grid drop off, okay? It's important. And every once in a while, give me a good body shot, all right? Okay. But the key is for you to stay disciplined and focused. Just relax. One round at a time. All you're going to worry about is this round. You're boxing beautiful, okay? Keith Mullings said to us yesterday, hey, David Reed is expected to earn a fleet of Mercedes and Jaguars in his career. I just want one good, solid Suburban to cart my kids around in. He thinks that's one of his big advantages in this fight, is that he feels he's not under any particular pressure, and Reed constantly is. But pressure for the right athlete is opportunity. David Reed wanted to turn pro in 1994. Al Mitchell persuaded him to wait to take advantage of the chance to go to the Olympics. Then in the third round against Alberta Duverhell of Cuba, he was down and looked as though he was headed for no better than a silver medal before he delivered the clutch right hand and scored gold. So everything has turned out well for David Reed along this way so far. Fernando Vargas is sitting at ringside tonight watching as potentially the path continues toward a big confrontation for the two of them. And I think it's a confrontation that will happen one way or the other. It may take a little more time than they expect, but it still would happen one day. Now there's Mullings with a hard right hand body shot. And you heard Al Mitchell between rounds asking Reed to mix in a body shot. There's a combination upstairs by David, and you see his fluidity and his hand speed when he releases his hands. Good defense by both fighters. Mullings showing more respect for Reed than we've seen him show before for an opponent. Wouldn't you agree, Roy? Well, not necessarily. He's still coming right at Reed, but it's just that he has to keep his hands up because he knows Reed is a big puncher. That's not, I don't think it's so much respect as it is smartness. You don't want to let a guy that show up like Reed get many punches in on you early. Had he been like this with Terry Norris, he wouldn't have been so cut up at the end of the fight that he still managed to win. Real superior top shelf athletes in this fight. These guys could succeed in a lot of sports. And two very nice guys on top of Obby Superb. Kind of fight where you root for both guys. David Reed still pumping the jab effectively in round number two. Mullings has gotten closer in this round, has landed a couple body shots, gets in another one with the left hand there, and Mullings is working his way into the fight as the second round concludes. Listen, I don't want you laughing and not okay, but I want you to keep your mouth closed and stay focused and stay behind your jab, okay? Now, you're making a miss, but you're not paying, making them pay. And the body shots is there. And remember we work off of the gym, the hook? The hook is there all the time. You're covering up good, but you're not hooking right hand off it. The left hook there and the right hook, right off the combination. You see how you're doing like that? Hook right off it, you go catch him. He's leaning his hand out. Either hook. He fight now, I'm fighting. He just keep fighting like this. How you feel, champ? Cool. 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 You, know, you ready? You burn a hot test, David, so you burn. Are you short and sweet? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't say don't hit double jab. Just break the hook. <laughs> and don't get careless.
care of this young man. Okay. Well, if it was a jabbing contest, they'd stop it now. Second Through the second round by CompuBox numbers, David Reed has landed 28 out of 80 jabs at 35%. Keith Mullings only three of 34. Mullings knows he's not going to beat Reed in a jabbing contest. His gig is to get inside of Reed's punching range. Mullings is going to have to take some chances. And then, then we'll see what Reed can do. He can't fight this fight against David Reed. He can't outbox the better boxer. Chasing Mullings with the right hand. Mullings back on the defensive now, more the way he was in round number one. Break. Stop punching. Don't punch the break. Reed looking into his corner for advice from Al Mitchell, even as he clinches with Keith Mullings. Reed's sort of of two minds about what to do when Mitchell talks to him during the round. There's part of him that wants to say, shut up, Al, leave me alone, I'm doing my work. But on the other hand, he so understands that Mitchell is the architect of everything that's happened to him in life that he can't resist the urge to turn around and listen to him when the, when the words start coming. Second little left hand landed for Reed. And there's Mullings working inside and getting a chance to go to the body. Now he goes upstairs. Al Mitchell's going to tell his fighter between rounds not to stand still against the ropes. Yeah, because that's one of the only chances he gives Keith to, to open up. Hard right hand by Reed wobbles Mullings. And a good little left hook inside by Reed as Mullings once again forces him back against the ropes. You may have mentioned to you that Keith Mullings has never been knocked down. So when Reed briefly wobbled him with that right hand, it was an interesting moment. And it shows you the power that Reed possesses. There's a right and a left and the blistering hand speed of David Reed. Trudges back to his corner, knowing that he is losing Stay the fight. Stay disciplined. Keep your hands up. You got a little sloppy because you start dropping your hands because things going away. Remember, I tell you, young athletes start getting careless because things going their way. Stay disciplined, okay? Find the right hand over top. All right, you get the fight is closed. All you got to do is just keep what you're doing what you're doing. You get on the rope, I am up here to the body, up to the head. This is where I'm told, Larry, we're going to look here in a second at the right hand that wobbles Keith okay. Mullings. This is the kind of punch you can't teach, you can't buy, you got it, or you don't. Straight, quick right hand. Round three by CompuBox numbers. Keith Mullings having a little trouble getting off, averaging only 38 punches per round. David Reed connecting with the jab. Harold Letterman has given each of the first three rounds to David Reed. Mullings reaching over the top and now tapping Reed with a left hand. Reed smiles. Mullings ignores him and goes back to the attack. Keith Mullings is a worker bee. You can take round after round from him. He's going to keep coming at you. Yeah, he's going to keep coming until it's over. You can believe that. You heard Al Mitchell make that really interesting comment between rounds. Young athletes tend to lose their focus when things are going well. Mitchell feels that 
Reed from time to time is relaxed in there. Caught a punch when he's off balance. Been knocked down a couple of times with flash knockdowns. Got knocked down by Kevin Kelly in his last fight. Got knocked down by the very light hitting James Coker twice. I remember a baseball manager once telling me that young pitchers lost their concentration on the clock. Not by how many pitches they threw, threw or how many innings they went, but you could just see as the game went along an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, an hour and a half, they would simply lose concentration. And sometimes that's happened to Reed. This is the best work Mullings has had by mauling Reed inside. This is exactly the fight Keith wants. He gets a chance to get more punches off inside like that. And I'm sure Mitchell will tell Reed not to stay in there like that. As long as Reed is out in the circle, moving freely, he's fine. When he gets his back against the ropes, Mullings plows in and goes to work. And now Mullings tries to tap, trap Reed against the ropes and do his business again. Mullings outworking Reed in this round so far. Through four rounds, it's a boxing match with sporadic flashes of warfare. That's a boxer against a fighter. Coming in September, it's inside the NFL. Join Lynn, Nick, Chris, and Jerry as they take, take each week's first look at the upcoming NFL games. The show premieres September 9 with a look at what it will take for the Broncos to put the first team to win three Super Bowls in a row. And why was it that the Cowboys, Steelers, Dolphins, and others all failed when gunning for their third titles inside the NFL every Thursday throughout the season? Okay, stay off the rope. Okay. You hear me? You heard the advice, and this is why the advice was given as Reed steals a glance into his corner. And while he does it, catches a short little left hook. Time! David Reed largely sticking with the jab in the early going. He's thrown 203 punches, 149 of them are jabs. Mullings has landed only 39. And Harold Letterman, how do you have it through four? You know, Jim, I got it 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing, David Reed. You know, Jim, we often talk about ring generalship. People say there's no such thing. This is beautiful ring generalship. When you keep the fighter at the end of that chair, when you keep him at a perfect distance so you can whack him and you don't get hit, that's great ring generalship. So, and that's why David Reed is out jabbing Keith Mullins. Jim, one quick thing about the length of that beard. You know, if that beard of Keith Mullins doesn't cushion the punches, I'd eat my hat. I mean, take a look at it. Had Reed's corner complained, they would have made him shave. I agree with you there, Harold. And uh, good for you for picking up on that. What? You know he's, I know he's got a reputation for a good beard. I didn't know <laughs> that he has a real beard. Well, that's one way to have a good beard. Wear a beard. Beard being boxing for chin. Also known as whiskers. And once again, there they are. Right hand by Reed momentarily stops Mullings. And Reed staying off the ropes in this round so far. Which is more of the ring generalship that Harold talked about. This time, when he does go to the ropes, he ties Mullings up as Mullings comes in. I have it three rounds to one, incidentally. 
I don't want to be in full agreement with Harold. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's more like it. So what do you think, Roy? Uh, you know, now that Harold's made his point, to giving the first four rounds to Reed and uh, all that, does Keith Mullings have him right where he wants him? Well, I wouldn't say he has him right where he wants him, but he's doing the only thing that's possible for him to do. There's a lot of conversation going in, uh, on there, Roy. Mullings and Reed exchanging more words than they are punches at the moment. Yeah, because Mullen wants to entice Reed to fight so that he can have a chance of landing a big shot. He knows he's not going to outbox David Reed. He wants to go out and try to land one big punch on David Reed. Now, you were saying that Mullings is doing the only thing that is available for him to do, which is? Which is chase Reed and try to land that one big shot. He's not going to outbox David Reed. David Reed is a great boxer. You're not going to find many guys that are going to outbox him. Not just a good boxer, but a great boxer. This is a great boxer. And he has a great corner man. Break. There you go. Step back. Yeah, I think Al makes for a strong corner for David. Keith Mullings' corner isn't all that bad. And it, and it has, incidentally, one of the most interesting cameos in the sport. Mullings' cut man, General Remo Butler from Fort Bragg, North Carolina is the first black man ever to have reached the rank of general in the special forces of the United States Army. Right. Terrific guy. I guess it's round six coming yep. up. And, uh, and we would probably rank her Brigadier General or maybe even Let him touch. Major General. Touch him, touch him. Damn, drop the right hand to the body. That's but I all. guess you didn't get her name, Larry. Well, she wasn't yeah. serving Coca-Cola's at ringside. At poolside, I should say, today. Let me fall in here. All right. There's Remo Butler, as I mentioned, first African-American ever to reach the rank of general in the Special Forces of the United States Army. And he's Keith Mullings, corner cut man. Through five rounds, Keith Mullings still able only to throw 39 punches per round. Reason? Reed just isn't there for him often enough. Hurry up, And Al Mitchell getting a little extra time for Reed to retape a glove here. And Mullings yelling at him, need a rest? You need a rest? And now Mullings booing and asking the crowd to boo with him. And still, the tape around Reed's Stop. gloves is loose. Fix this lace up. Thank Jay you. Haiti. Got here hanging down. Cut that off. Do something with it. Cut it off. All right. Box, time in. He's making him miss. Is he making him pay enough, Roy? Well, he's not, but he doesn't want to take crazy chances, though. Yeah, but. Come on, he's, he's got the bigger guns. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but the bigger guns are always the smarter guns. Yeah, you know, Don't push out there. just because you have the bigger guns doesn't mean that you ought to take chances. I, I know from working with Roy that Roy believes professionalism in the sport is if you're winning the fight, and it's easy enough to do it, don't take any chances. Well, I'm not talking about taking chances. I'm talking about not running. He's not running. He's making him pay when he gets a chance to. Stop! It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna cost you a point also. Don't know more of that. Mullings making it clear that he thinks Reed is running. And I think Mullings is trying to get inside Reed's head a little bit to try to goad him into a fight. He is. And he's getting a little bit frustrated because he wants to trade. He wants to fight. And Mullings is a fighter who wants to trade. And now he's talking to Reed again. And Reed talking back to him in there. Mullings is winning some of the crowd over to his side with the body language aimed at showing what he thinks of Reed's tactics. But that's another thing the professionals should ignore, right, Roy? That's right. Point. You understand? No more warnings. No more warnings. No more warnings. Box. 
It's been a huge round for Jay Nady. <laughs> Nady's been involved about five times in this round. See, now there you go. If Mullings connects on that right hand nothing after funny, Reed overextended funny, yeah. on his own right hand, Break. then that would have qualified as a Reed mistake. I'm taking points real soon, boys. like a gossip columnist in there. Mullins tries to set himself and engage. Four punch combination by Reed punctuates the round. And Mullings with a final verbal offering of his own. Leon, check his tape, left side. Round six was a circus and not exactly the kind you like to see. Take the tape. Whatever he do, don't let it. Don't go with his tactic. I know, sir. Oh, don't do that. Don't okay. go with his tactic. You just stay, have your gun ready to fire all the time. Okay, okay, okay. All right, that's all I'm asking you to do. I got you, I got you. All right, we can work on All right, all right. I'm working the mental, you know? Tape. 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 Getting upbraided by the general in the corner, Mullings tried to explain that he is working on the mental side of Reed, trying to frustrate him, agitate him. Get out of the ring! That's good enough. Let's stop. Come here, come here. Come you on. better start working on the physical side we don't want of the match. We turn this into a circus. Yes, you okay. understand? Cut it out. That's me. Nady agrees it was a circus. for the body because he doesn't have a beard there. <laughs> Well, if it goes the distance, it would be the third straight root going performance. Don't make it the fourth straight root going performance for David Reed. Which is not bad. He gets good experience out of this. And this is the type of fight he needs. He needs all types of opponents to make him that great fighter that he's exactly going to be. Exactly what Al Mitchell said yesterday. Al Mitchell said, I don't mind seeing him go the distance because at this stage of his career, he's only had 13 pro fights. Every round is a new learning experience. The more, the better. Guys. He's got a title. He's getting paid a lot of money. He's supposed to be a real fighter. Break! And I don't think that his performance is edifying right now. I don't care how many rounds he goes. I want to see him look good. He doesn't look good. Does that mean he has to knock Keith Mullings out? No, he has to look good. He doesn't look good. Yes, he's winning the fight. And more of that. And less of this. Well, I'd certainly like to see more boxing and less talking. But he seems to have come back with more of a purpose in round seven. Mulling said he would not take special care to go after Reed's left eye, and he hasn't. There is no apparent problem with that eye for me. I mean, what is this? Watch your head, watch your head, Keith. Yeah, 
saying, keep your hands up. This kid is trying to butt you with his head. Yeah, now, you, 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 tell, another now. thing. After you stop laughing, come back. Now, if you, if you focus, young man, and stay behind the desk, stop laughing and crying, oh, no, you get this right, right, right. after You understand what I'm saying? Left you come back. You're making a miss, but you ain't making a mistake. Yes, it is. Now, just relax. It's OK. Yeah. Here, take it. Hold your head up so you can okay. fix it. Give me the water, please. Thank you. Get the grease from his heart. I get it. Let me you. Now, you understand what I'm saying, young man? October 22, Next Prince time, Nassim Hamed and Eric Morales on the same card. Some of the, the most show. talented fighters in the sport. Now, listen, the hook is there off the cover. All right, stay in the corner now. You know, Mullings is coming forward. He's doing a lot of brawling. He's trying to upset Reed. I don't know that he's trying to win the fight. I don't know that he's standing there and throwing punches Go and shoulder, really trying Keith. to do it. He's coming forward, but he's, he's fighting defensively. He's not fighting like a guy who thinks he can win the fight. What do you think, boy? Well, he's not fighting defensively. He's trying to open uh, David Reed up so he can find that big shot. And once he gets him open, then he'll start doing the big shot. Yeah, when yeah. is that going to be? Day after tomorrow? He's only got a few more rounds to do it. This is true. It may not happen. David Reed may never slow down. A little left hook inside by Reed. Mullings manages to get Reed against the ropes again. Reed manages to get away with Mullings unable to unleash any real artillery. That's been the story of the bout. The one thing that you have to say for Reed is that his ability makes opponents do strange things. That's right. And, and, and make for ugly fights, awkward fights, because they have a hard time getting past his fast hands. Mullings almost clipping Reed with the right hand, but a little bit short. Reed is the one who's been able to connect solidly. Yes. If it continues like this, it's hard to imagine Mullings finding some stratagem that would win him the fight. He has a cut over his left eye. So Mullings joins a growing list of surgeon, surgeons who have cut Reed's left eye. He's had three separate surgeries on the droopy eyelid. Stop, 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 stop. And you heard Al Mitchell complaining between rounds about Mullings' head and the chance that he would butt Reed as he comes inside. So you have to wonder if, in fact, Reed is cut over the left eye. Is it because of a punch or a butt? Judges penalize Reed for blatantly going backward over and over. And the fight almost breaks out. <laughs> would we be glad to see it? <laughs> I think everybody would now. Listen to me, kid, and listen to me well. You work behind a jab. Now, every split second, start sitting on your punches. Do you understand what I'm saying now? It's time for you to start hurting this kid now. Okay, yeah, because he's okay? just coming in. Yeah, he's just coming in. Settle down and have your balance, okay? Start getting disciplined and sync, okay? okay? Start working the and then found him. Hold on, bro. You got the strongest punches, Keith, even if they're short. Mm -hmm. He's slapping with a lot of his shots. You have the strongest shot, baby. All right. We got the energy, baby, to burn. You got the energy to burn. Yes, sir. You talking about how Roy Jr. reached back up? All right. OK, stay this and keep your hands up. This is when he's dangerous, OK? Dave, you can get this one on the job. OK, come on. 
By CompuBox numbers in round eight, Mullings threw 60 punches. That's by far his highest output of the fight so far. Reed was 21 of 52 for 40 percent. And now Mullings goes to work on the Reed body in round number nine. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through eight? Jim, I got it six rounds to two, 78, 74, David Reed. You know, Jim, Keith Mullings is definitely the aggressor. But through most of the fight, it's been what we call ineffective aggressiveness. He moves forward, he doesn't land the punches. But all of a sudden, in round seven and eight, he charged forward, and David Reed stopped punching, and Keith Mullings started punching. So I think Keith Mullings did enough to win round seven and eight, and have it six rounds to two. I have it seven rounds to one. Reed looks like he wants to hold his ground here now and challenge Mullins. Mitch told him to sit down on his punches a little more and try to hurt Keith. So this should make for an interesting fight now. I'd like to see an interesting fight tonight. So I take it that you found uh, Whitaker Barrett uninteresting despite the fact it was close. So far, I think I'm 0 for one and a half. <laughs> Among the luminous and notorious here tonight at ringside, on the far side of the ring is the faded fighter Hector Macho Camacho who in his usual pathetic attempts to get attention is putting on an absurd display of self-glorification even while the fight goes on in the ring. We won't bother you with a shot of him, but it is yet another ridiculous Camacho performance. Bravo. I think Camacho thinks he can get one of these guys in the ring. I'm not sure which one. My vote against is against it right now. Yeah, I wouldn't pay a dime to see him fight one of these guys. <laughs> his son will be fighting here Monday night, and his son is kind of an interesting prospect. Meanwhile, Mullings and Reed offer more of the same. in the books. A frustrated Keith Mullings considers the possibility of chasing Reed back to his corner between rounds and <laughs> decides to go Behind back and jam. sit down. Stop putting them together to get this kid out of here. You understand what I'm saying? When you're in close, drill that right uppercut. You understand? Right uppercut and left hook. Put them together, all right? <laughs> We mentioned to you earlier that Reed's Olympic teammate and fellow 154-pound world champion, Fernando Vargas, 17 knockouts and 17 fights. Possible future opponent for Reed and all the other stars of the 154-pound division is at ringside. He's got a legal problem facing a felony charge as the result of a scuffle that took place shortly after his last title defense against Raul Marquez. But if he can get beyond that, he remains, like Reed, a rising superstar in the sport. I have to say, Reed looks less like a superstar every time out right now. So while you defended him in our conversations after the Kelly fight in July, you are not impressed tonight. Well, I defend him because, as I said earlier, his ability is such that he's making other fighters fight fights of desperation, fight awkwardly, in and out, afraid to take chances. And I, and I take all that into account in measuring him. But I don't see him dealing with any of it now in a positive way or in a classy championship way. Well, I don't think Mullings looks afraid to take chances now. He seems to be showing the requisite desperation, aware that he's behind in the fight. Yes, but he's not throwing enough punches still. 
You're not going to work outside. You have to work inside. You got to work somewhere. Hard to throw a lot of punches against a guy as fast as Reed. In round nine, Reed was 14 out of 52. Mullings, 20 out of 50, including 15 to 32 power shots. So at least in terms of CompuBox numbers, Mullings' performance is rising in the last couple rounds. Whether the judges will see that and agree with it remains to be seen. It may not matter at this stage, given the ease with which Reed was able to win the early rounds. There you go. If you're going to throw the uppercut and land it, bring a left hook behind it. You may as well. better to keep him once they see him in the ring with another classy fighter. A fighter who fights somewhat style that he fights. It makes, it'll make for a better fight then. I thought that was going to happen tonight. I thought Mullings would be able to give him more trouble than has been the case. David's just so much faster. Now that was the advantage for David, to use his speed and stay smart, not get impatient, and he can win a fight easier. If you ain't gonna do nothing once you ain't close to him, you grab him. Twenty-two rounds of boxing already headed toward an apparent twenty-four on boxing after dark makes for a late night for you East Coast boxing viewers. And moving to the right. As sportscasters have been saying throughout the decades, happy to have you with us. The man who talks to Mullings between rounds is trainer Al Smith. There you saw the kind of quickness with that early counter right hand that discourages the opponents of Reed from wanting to stand and fight him in a coherent way. They try to brawl with him. They try to take one or two shots and clinch, run away. None of them is willing to stand there and go with him. Roy, do you think that when the welterweights, De La Hoya, Trinidad, Forte move up, that they will give Reed better opposition? They should, but I doubt it, because Reed's speed will then show you that he is really a more superb athlete than most of those guys are. His speed will be an advantage of his. His ring savvy will also be an advantage. And I think Dave Reed will pretty much handle that division for a little while. You Seriously, he can so, so you're Vargas? saying that he's going to hand, handle De La Hoya, Trinidad, and Parte the well, way he has his other opponents? Well, De La Hoya is going to be difficult for him because De La Hoya is just as fast as he is. But uh, the other fighters are going to have a hard time with him. The main, reason, the main reason is because he's quick as they are, and he punches harder than they do, and he's already been at this weight class. They're coming up to him. So he's going to have an advantage in punching power. Vargas has been more spectacular in his early career as a 154-pound champion. It's all about the opponents. Is Vargas fast enough to deal with Reed? He's fast enough, but it's all about the opponents. Vargas' opponents have been right there for Vargas. Reed has fought a lot of European fighters, guys who have different awkward styles, and it hasn't looked as good to us, people who don't know boxing, but people who know boxing, like myself, can see the potential in David Reed. So you're saying if Reed had had a chance to fight people like Yuri Boy Campos and Raul Marquez, he'd have he'd, all knockouts too. He'd look like Vargas. I think Roy makes a good point. I think he makes a terrific point. Usually does.
There are moments when he releases his hands and fires multiple combinations. When Reed's hand speed will put you in mind of something sweet, something with sugar on it. We are at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Initial big boxing show here. 154-pound world champion, former Olympic gold medalist David Reed, looking to stay unbeaten against the tough, durable Keith Mullings. It has not been a very pretty fight, but it's had a couple of pretty right hands, particularly that one, a counter shot by Reed that landed cleanly on Mullings' face. And so far, it looks like a one-sided David Reed victory as we come down the stretch. Earlier tonight, in a heavyweight battle, six foot eight inch Lance Mount Whitaker got a split decision against unbeaten New Yorker Monty Barrett to polish his credentials for Hold possible bigger front. fights down the road. Come on, come on, hurry up. Man, you listen to me. You stay behind the jam, keep your head, and put them together. And I don't want one or two, I want four or five punches, okay? But you didn't right back on the angle. But stop putting all four shots hard, okay? okay. Huh? Take it to the last round. With the body, yeah. with the body shot. Right back up to the head. We got to go ahead and like we try to cut this tree. The tree got to fall, okay? Let's make him fall, baby. Hand okay. I me mean, the. Okay, we get it. We get it after he gets up. We get it after he gets up. Okay. Okay, you understand what I'm saying, champ? You're doing good. Hey, but pick him up, put him together. Mullings will make an all-out attack here. Boy, he caught two flush right hands, Roy, and came right through him in that last round. He's got some chin. He takes a good punch. Harold, how do you have it through 11? Jim, I got it 107, 102, eight rounds to three, David Reed. You know, Jim, I'll tell you something. I, you know. That, that uh, Budweiser sign is very slippery, so that was a slip. Is that what you're going to tell us? No. What I was going to say was, you know, you like to see two guys stand there and fight it out. David Reed is winning the fight. There's no question he's outboxing him, but brother, Keith Mullins is making this fight. And certainly, around 7, 8, and 9, Keith Mullins won. He got inside, David Reed didn't do a darn thing. I mean, it would be a great fight if Reed would stand the punch. Another display of chin by Keith Mullins. Yeah, well, that was not only the Sunday punch, it was the Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday punch. <laughs> Box! Mullings just shook it off. <laughs> well, he's never been knocked down in a fight. Did you ever knock him down in the gym? Okay, nope. Nope. Never really tried to. No, I know. You don't try <laughs> to knock guys down in the gym, do you? Not often. Ah, now it's Mullings Gloves who... Uh, hey, 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 go over there. Mullings unraveling a little bit here in the 12. Come on, you guys, this is simple. He catcalled Reed earlier when Reed had to have his uh, tape adjusted. Now the shoe is on the other foot, and, and it's still loose. And I wonder if Mady is, no, no, no. Thank you. is just Thank anxious you. to get this over with. Oh, good combination by David Reed. Short right hand, left hook landed. I do think he's getting better with his left hand. I know he is. He's getting better with everything, with each and every fight. was an, an outstanding get up, get up. linebacker at James Madison High School in Brooklyn, and then a monster back at Brooklyn College, and that was his first tackle of the evening. <laughs> stop it, guys, stop it. Break, stop it. I'm gonna stop it. Ben 
seconds to go. David Reed just staying away. Figures he's done enough. Mullings gets his second tackle get up, get up. and tries to knee Reed in the face. You know, like everybody, I love Mullings, but every bit of class that we've seen him have out of the ring, he somehow threw out, threw out tonight. The frustration, the frustration, the, the jabber, and, and it was punctuated at the very end of the fight when he tried to knee David Reed. That was bad. That was bad, I agree. Tell me that's not mine. Under pressure, he lost it and blew it. I hope that good job means I won. Let's take another look at this unfortunate moment, which, uh, which I agree with you, Larry. This is gonna damage Keith Mullings' reputation and deservedly so. another full S BS loss. All of Mullings' losses have been close decisions. He feels frustrated with what's happened in his career. Harold Letterman, how'd you have it through 12? Jim, 116, 112, eight rounds to four, David Reed. But you know, darn it, I really would have liked to see two guys stand in the middle and slug it out. David Reed did enough to win. He boxed beautifully. He snaps that left jab. He's got that wicked right hand, but he's not exciting. I don't know. Keith Mullins, you know, I love aggressive guys. Keith Mullins was aggressive. He came forward. He tried to make the fight. He just doesn't have the talent. You can't take the title away from David Reed. He'll box to be out punched him but boy I'd love to see him stand and fight you know and, and as you say that Roy Jones is laughing because I know what you think Roy it's easy for the layman or the outside the ring observer to say we'd like to say see two guys stand in the middle of the ring and slug it out but the job of the professional fighter is to win the fight without risk if possible the objective of professional boxing is to hit and not be hit however you have to go about doing that is what you do no matter by all means necessary your job is to go out hit and not be hit don't let nobody tell you anything any different so in that sense this was a professional <laughs> performance by reed <laughs> keith mullings expressing more of his frustration over what he experienced Ladies here and, and let's go to michael buffer to hear the numbers hotel and casino of las vegas we go to the budweiser scorecards all three judges, Alejandro Rochin, Hubert Earl, and Dwayne Ford, scored the belt 117 to 111 for the winner by unanimous decision and still WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, the American Dream, David Reed. So now Mullings has a loss with which he won't be any happier than his previous ones, but not as close. Final punch stat numbers, and you see the large margins by which Reed threw more punches and landed considerably more. Mullings jacking up the effort in the later rounds, and as Harold Letterman saw it, winning some of those rounds, but ultimately David Reed the victor, and he continues moving forward toward bigger things in the 154-pound weight class where so much of the serious boxing business of the future appears it will take place quickly let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring with the winner thank you Jim congratulations David that was another ugly fight even though you won it why are you being involved in so many fights that doesn't don't seem to be satisfying in one way or another give us your analysis well uh I guess my people was uh, pushing me to the limit where I belonged at. I belong right here at this level. And uh, Keith Mullins, you got to give it to him. He was tough. He was, you know, he was a, a very tough, adorable opponent for me. And so you were unable to do what you wanted to do, or you had to do what you didn't want to do to win the fight? Explain. I couldn't, I couldn't really do what I want because he was tough. He was. Uh, holding his head down, he was head biting me, he was doing everything he could do to smother my punches and try to punch me at the same time. But uh, do you feel that because of your reputation, because of your punching ability, because of your quick hands, that your opponents are doing strange and awkward things to cope with you? Is that what's leading to these fights? That's exactly what's happening. These guys are watching my tapes and they're trying to do what they can to win. And uh, they know that I'm very fast. They just can't cope with it. 
Your manager and trainer, Al Mitchell, said that if you ever fought at 100%, he would drop dead. He's not close to that right now, <laughs> and neither are you, are you yet? No, not right now. I only had 13 uh, bouts, and I'm still learning. So, you know, right back to the drawing board. I beat a very uh, tough opponent. Hey, you just got to go back to the uh, drawing board and uh, do what we do. All right, just one moment. All right, Al, you give us on a scale of 10, where was David tonight? And you explain the lack of the drama, the lack of of some kind of commitment to a, a f the full armor that he has in these fights. I get Dave a seven and a half. The only problem was the head, he kept coming in with the head and, and doing all kinds of things with the head. But the problem is I, I told Dave in camp he was going to come with the head, you know, and a couple of times Dave got on the rope. But hey, I don't think nobody that fought him outboxed him the way Dave did. I had Dave running probably out to 12 rounds, nine rounds, and probably everybody else did. But the guy didn't come to fight. He come to put his head in and look like try to butt him. But it was a great fight. And hey, this was, this was all our sport is about. Do you believe, David, that you need to assert yourself in some definitive way to recapture the feeling that you were going to be this very exciting, dramatic fighter in the ring? Well, uh, you got to notice that, like I said before, only had 13 bouts, and uh, I'm working, I'm working myself up to that, uh, to that condition. If I, I mean. You know, this was, like I said before, he was, Keith Mullins was very tough, and uh, we just uh, taking them as they come. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> so, we had uh, 24 rounds tonight. I don't know that we had too many of them that um, we want to put in a time capsule. We will see David Reed again. I don't know whether we'll see any of the others that we saw tonight again. All of them may be better off than some people in Las Vegas where there are a few winners and a lot of losers. Jim? All right, thanks.